Hey there, boys and girls. Welcome back for a little bit more Flip Clouds. I need a haircut. Today, we're starting our new unit on Evolution, also pronounced Evolution, if you're not feeling silly today. Evolution essentially is any kind of a change in species over time. Now that's an important definition because there can be any time when the whole group changes together or not so much together over time. Notice it's not like an individual like me turning into the next level of Pokemon. Uh, 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 uh. That is not what we're talking about. We're talking about when a group of them changes. And remember, their definition of a species is very important here. Any two organisms that can interbreed and produce fertile offspring, we're still going to use that one as their definition of species. You can have microevolution, which are itty bitty changes, and you can have macroevolution, which are big old freaking changes. And like all changes, these happen mostly as a result of natural selection. Talking about Chuck D today, boys and girls. Now, originally, Darwin was not the first one to be thinking of uh, these sorts of things. This guy was a little bit earlier. This was an economist named Thomas uh, Malthus, or Malthus. It doesn't matter how you say it. He's dead. He won't mind. But this guy here behind me, like I said, he was an economist. And he came up with the ideas of rent theory and basically the whole idea of how to become a slumdog millionaire. But he also wrote this whole paper called The Principles of Population Growth. We talked about this earlier in uh, the year in our ecology unit, in our population growth unit. It was basically the idea that people are going to make a lot of, a lot of babies, but there's some sort of carrying capacity that the, the, there's only so many that can fit in there. There's only so many resources to go around. And like you guys saw in the little fish lab where you had to click a whole bunch of times, once you reach the carrying capacity, it didn't matter. You could put the growth rate up to like a bunch and it still would not pass it. In fact, if you put the growth rate too high, population would spike, they'd use all the resources, and everybody would die. Now here is this attractive young man, that is Charles Darwin, circa way back in the day. He was like, oh, I see what you're saying here, Malthus. But it's not just people and cities, it's everything everywhere. But he did come up with some rules for the idea. All right? The first major tenet is not in the individuals that are going to be all the same. And so as a result, not all these individuals are going to be able to survive. Remember, for the good of the species, you need to be able to be making the babies. And so if not all the individuals are the same, not all of them are going to be likely to survive at all. And then you have to be able to survive long enough to make the babies. His idea was that those with the most adaptations are the ones that are able to survive. It's not like, you know, I took my arm off and made it into something different. What an adaptation, what we mean by that is these are traits that have been adapted for that environment. These are traits that give an organism an advantage over others in the environment. For example, if all of a sudden an alien race came down that only would, you know, murder people that didn't have awesome mustaches, this would become an adaptation because, yeah, now I'm better adapted to survive. And you probably see an even larger increase in awesome mustaches. So the idea is if you have the better traits, you'll survive longer. The longer you survive, the more times you'll reproduce. The more times you reproduce, the more likely it is that your traits will be the ones who show up in the population more often. We're talking about gene frequencies. Ties in with our genetics unit now, doesn't it, children? Now, in order to really understand this, we need to understand the idea of survival of the fittest. Because a lot of people think it's like Mr. Universe Arnold Schwarzenegger from back in the 60s, when once upon a time he actually was jacked and tan, or probably even stronger, apparently he's too strong, talking about Patrick Starr. But that's not what we mean. It's not physical fitness. By fitness, it's whatever is the best fit for the environment. So like we're showing you here on this hilarious cartoon that I read sometimes on the internet, you've got all these nasty features, all of them outlasted by this thing up here. All right, humans were by far not the strongest species group out there, but we did have this going on for us. So as a result, we're able to survive and produce more offspring and thrive and push others like their Neanderthal brothers out of existence, even though they were jacked and tan and huge, but we had 
this. So again, it's not about physical fitness like, uh, uh, like uh. it's about being a better fit for the environment. And that's an important distinction. As you probably guess, it's tied in with reproductions and the genie type times. So because sexual reproduction works the way it does, and also asexual reproduction passes down the traits directly, uh, organisms from the parents go to the offspring, and as a result those offspring tend to be a lot more like their parents. And so the idea is that if you're changing who survives long enough and which genes are being passed down, that over time the whole group, the genetic composition of the species is going to change. And even those little teeny changes, like now all of a sudden there's more brown haired people than blue haired people, probably because blue hair is a weird hair color to have naturally occurring. But you see what I'm saying there? That's microevolution. Just those little tiny, just bloop, 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 those little tiny changes. That's microevolution. So you're probably wondering how Darwin came up with this idea. That'll be for our next lecture. Thanks for watching Flippity Flip Flop Flip Class. Don't forget to Moodle. Links in the canoodle.